First off, this guide is going to be as quick as I can make it, and I'll make a full guide when the new season rolls out. Guides plural, because there's so many ways to play Fresh AD. Now, a good question to start off is, is AD Fresh viable at all? That's a very good question. The runes I'd recommend are these here, the keystone being Grasp of the Undying. It gives a lot of sustain and poke when playing in top lane, which helps immensely in both playing to Fresh's strengths as a ranged champion in top lane, while reducing one of his flaws, his complete lack of sustain and bad HP regen. However, perfectly acceptable as well is Fleet Footwork which also gives great sustain, and doesn't need you to risk losing a trade to get it. If you're looking for a more one-shot, bursty or otherwise mean build, feel free to go for something like Dark Harvest, Press the Attack, whatever you want, it's your life. Now as someone who played Fresh as a jungler when he came out in Season 3 and then proceeded to go top lane since Season 5, I have basically no support habits. But regardless, I recommend giving it some time to get used to playing AD Fresh before you really rate it, since playing for damage and actually scaling with souls and attack speed is quite different from normal support Fresh. Naturally, when push comes to shove, any mechanics you learn to support Fresh will probably come in handy, so don't worry about erasing habits at least. If you have experience with ranged top laners, that helps a lot, like Quinn or even Teemo, bonus points if you play Teemo top with Grasp. For the build, you go either Gale Force or Sunfire as your mythic, just remember, picking Gale Force means you can still go Bruiser by buying Deadman's Plate afterwards, and getting decent DPS with a Rage Knife and Rage Blade later. With Sunfire, you'll aim for Titanic Hydra second item, sometimes even buying the pickaxe, after your first recall, to poke your enemy harder to press your advantage. Galeforce does both more damage against low HP targets than Duskblade can enable, and grants tons of utility and potential to catch opponents out of position with its dash that doesn't have any cast time, making it remarkably faster than Stridebreaker. Whichever one you choose, the early lending phase is the same. Focus on CS, and poke with Grasp or when you have a decently charged auto attack. Keep an eye on your E passive if you need to. It can charge up for a maximum of 10 seconds, but can be unleashed at any time. Many things will be matchup dependent, but as a general rule of thumb, dangerous melee enemies with gap closers mean you don't want to just throw out your abilities whenever they're up. Keep Flay to peel yourself off and slow the opponent, maybe even negating their dash as a whole. This is great against enemies like Orn, whose dashes can interrupt and destroy their combos. And a quickly double casted Q mid fight stuns the enemy for longer than it locks you out of auto attacks, giving you the edge in fights and trades. Though your lantern is useful for picking up out of reach souls, understand that you should keep it handy if you fear the enemy will jump on you and you'll need every last drop of health and shields you can get. Generally, trade around grasp more than your E passive in the early game since your AD is low. That means your E isn't amazing either, but it isn't not there, still use it when you can. If junglers are nearby, you should definitely hold on to your abilities as fresh. CC and lanterns from an unwarded location should be any ganking jungler's dream. In ranged matchups, fresh tends to be weaker due to his lower range, but with some early AD, the E passive and grasp can outtrade enemies one to one on auto attacks. The grasp sustain on top of that will keep you winning trades as long as you can maintain that one to one. Things like Lucian's Q and passive, Quinn's passive and reapplications, and Teemo blind can make things very difficult until you should choose your pokes really carefully. The latter two are significantly weaker when their abilities are down, so take the time to really abuse them with superior damage and lantern shield. The majority of matchups I'd regard as neutral, but some ideas on really difficult ones would be champions like Renekton, who can dash, trade and dash away before you can even say anything, and then start zoning you crazily and champions like the aforementioned Lucian, who is really able to both dodge your hooks and trade with you like crazy. After your first back, it's a good idea to build some kind of AD so your auto attacks scale crazy fast. This is why I suggest Pickaxe before Bami Cinder if you're going Sunfire Cape, since it helps so much early. However, if you're at your opponent's mercy, it happens, then unless you're really confident in an idea in your head, you should skip AD, build defensively, and focus on farming up the Sunfire. Once Gale Force is acquired, you can either rip your opponent apart as usual, only with a much stronger all-in once you've poked them down, or use the dash to go gank around the enemy mid and jungle, or even bot if you have time, 
Just remember that Gale Force Flay is more reliable than Gale Force Q. Speaking of reliable and mid game, your full damage combo is Q, land it, make sure it connects, then walk up for a tiny bit if necessary, cast R, then use your E after pulling them towards your ult to make sure they hit a wall, lantern at any time to either shield yourself or bring in an ally. This alongside AD burst from your E passive and Gale Force if you have it, can kill pretty much any squishy and quite a few bruisers with maybe a couple more auto attacks or assistance from your team. As fresh, you're always looking for good catches with Q anyway, so it's worth having this damage combo at the ready. After Gale Force, either build Deadman's Plate or Force of Nature depending what kind of resistance you need, Mercury Treads or Steel Plates for the same reason, and Rage Knife when you can afford it to get more damage. Maybe you'll get it before the defense items if you're ahead, and finish Rage Blade later to stack up on the crit on hit damage and doubling your soul on hit every few auto attacks. Alternatively, build Rapid Fire Cannon, Storm Razor, and Infinity Edge if big crits are more your style. If you've built Sunfire, you can afford to stay top lane for longer since you're far tankier but can still roam. Getting the tier map for your Titanic Hydra will help you push, shove, and pressure even more and thus roam to mid more often. Your goal becomes to finish your Sunfire and Titanic in order to stomp around teamfights with the burn damage and the great AD and AoE from Titanic, and also farming side lanes quickly with your huge AoE to stack up souls. Take jungle monsters too if you can. After core items, take more defense or offense as needed. Wit's End is a good offensive item and Fawn Mail or Force of Nature are great defensive items. Since you have plenty of damage on Titanic and Sunfire already, you don't need to overinvest too much in completely aggressive items. And attack speed late game has more value when you get more souls and therefore more on hit damage with every auto attack. In case you didn't know, the number of souls you have is the minimum amount of magic damage you can do on your auto attacks. Late game you'll either be looking for picks, peeling or diving as the game demands. Assess yours and the enemy's team composition and fed members to figure out what role you need to fill and stick by it. Then lose and blame the team. That's what I like to do. Thanks for watching. There'll be more detailed guides coming with the new season 11 next year. Until then, check out my other videos for more AD Fresh, memes and whatevers, and subscribe and like to support the channel. Blah blah blah, links in description. <coughs> have a wonderful new year and good luck, but more importantly, have fun. See ya.